In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my extremely simple mash mixer. Works great. Come on. Welcome back. So a lot of you have left comments asking me how I made this mixer. It is really simple. Now I bought this drill specifically to build this mixer. It is a half inch cobalt that you can get at Lowe's. Don't remember what I gave for it, but it wasn't very expensive. Uh, maybe it was 70 bucks. I'm not sure. But you need a half inch drill. You need a powerful drill, if, especially if you're doing all grains and if you're doing, you know, 15 gallons or so. You need a, a drill with a lot of torque. So all I use is this drill, this mixer. And I chose this mixer specifically. This is for mixing sheetrock mud. So you can also get this at, you know, your big box hardware store. But it's got this rounded bottom on it so that it can sit right down on the bottom of my pot and spin. And it's not going to, you know, damage the bottom or anything like that. Uh, I Sometimes I'll even lift it up off the bottom. But if it gets to the bottom, you know, if it works its way down there, it's not going to hurt anything. So I chose this specifically for that reason. So let's get into how I built this. And I'm, I'll, let me set up the camera a little bit. So the bit. first thing I did is determine the width of these two 2x6s. Uh, there's two of them there. That serves as the base. Everything rests and is built off of that. And I wanted it to extend far enough over so that I can have these legs come down. And the purpose of those legs is to rest against these handles. It does so on both sides. Caddy corner, you know, so the handle is behind the leg on this side and the handle is in front of the leg on this side. So that when this thing wants to turn, those handles grab it. So, um, I just set boards up on there and then got a two by four and made some marks. I, I didn't even use a tape measure for this part. Once I had these, the base configured, then what I had to do is find the center because that's where the hole for your bit is going to be. Oops. So the bit, the, uh, the mixer rod goes through there and that needs to be in the center so i just measured from you know here to here cut that in half and that's where that is going to be this is just standard two by four width now i got i got lucky in that um that standard two by four width was perfect for the drill that i got let me show you that part the mount for the drill is just this vertical two by four with these two by sixes on the side. And, you know, originally I put those two by sixes there because I figured I was probably going to have to clamp these together, like with a C clamp right here, so that it would put pressure on the drill and hold it in place. As it turns out, I've never had to clamp this, it just stays right there. So, the other thing I had to do was measure. And I used a tape measure for this. When that drill is sitting all the way against this, uh, this upper arm, I measured from the arm to the center of the chuck. And that is how far this hole is off of this 2x4 that is running the full length up. That way, I know that the bit itself is... The bit is sitting straight up and down. That hole holds it in place so it doesn't try and walk around. And I know that it's not cattywhomped at an angle or anything like that. And then I just had to make this long enough so that when this paddle is in its place, well, let me just, uh, let me just go ahead and put it in there. So. I had to make sure this was in the correct positioning so that when the drill bit is, uh, the paddle is in its place and the drill is there, it's being held with friction right here. And again, if your drill doesn't fit perfectly in this uh, width, which is three and a half inches, then you can either adjust 
this two by four if you've got to rip it down or maybe use a wider piece and rip it down to the right size so that this friction is just right you can do that or you can just find a way to clamp it with hose clamps or seat clamps or something like that and so this thing has worked perfectly every time i use it um, the other thing i also did was i used this switch and so i wired a cord that i plug into the wall i wired a cord that i just plug into the wall and then i wired this cord so that i can just plug the drill into it so the power comes into the wall gets wired into the switch and then power is switched to this cord that the drill is plugged into and what i also did um, which I highly recommend is I used, this is just a regular light dimmer switch uh, that I can adjust the speed of the drill. So the first time I did it, I, uh, I tried to use, this is a, a variable trigger and uh, I bought this drill because it had the variable trigger and my plan was to use uh, this zip tie and adjust that triggered ever so slightly to the speed that I wanted. What I found, first of all, what I found was that's not easy to do with any kind of uh, if effectiveness. That prompted me to put in a switch that is, is, has this dimmer. It's basically just a re-spit that that controls the amount of voltage that goes to the drill. So I, I use the trigger lock on the drill, right? and now the drill is on high all the way full blast and then i plug everything in the switch is off i turn it all the way down to low i turn the switch on and then i just raise the dimmer switch up until it gets to the speed that i want and the reason it's important to have this switch is because the amount of power that you put toward that drill is going to change throughout the mashing process because like if you're doing an all grain and uh, you know that mash is going to get thicker and thicker and going to require a higher speed to get it to mix as fast as you want it to mix and then you know once your enzymes take place and it thins out then you can slow it back down and that was just too difficult to do using this zip tie and trying to adjust the variable trigger on this drill so um I don't remember if I paid extra to have a variable trigger. I just remember specifically looking for it, but I, I know now I don't need a variable trigger with this switch setup. And all in all, uh, this mixer, not counting the not counting the drill and the paddle itself, but just building this uh, stand uh, for it, you know I don't I don't think it cost me maybe it cost me thirty dollars because of the switch and everything everything else was you know i had old cords that i could cannibalize to use and i think i even had the the power box and all that so this thing was very cheap to make it was very easy to make it probably took me you know maybe an hour or two to put it all together and get you know think about how i was going to do it but i imagine if you just copied this exact design you could build this in a matter of 45 minutes um and like i said it works great i've never had this thing do anything but work perfectly for me so i highly recommend that you go ahead and build one very inexpensive especially if you've already got the drill you know it's a no-brainer because you don't even have to spend the money for that and but even if you do have to buy a drill just for this like i said i think i may have given 70 bucks for this not sure but drill mixer paddle everything less than a hundred dollars to not have to sit there and stir for 90 minutes while you're gelatinizing corn for example so listen if you like these diy equipment kind of videos you're going to like this playlist right here um, and if not youtube thinks you'll like this one see you next time